Welcome to Board Online, Board Offline. Today I have an unboxing of a game from Phil Eklund called Pax Emancipation. Now this is a game uh, about the uh, outlawing of slavery throughout the world and how it began and you are one of three different factions that are trying to uh, successfully, through whatever means necessary, make slavery illegal throughout the world. And it follows real events. It has dates and facts and all that. It, it seems to me that it probably is an educational game as well as a game. And, and, and from everything I've heard of Phil Eklund's games, they're very complex, but also very, very thematic and very fun. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting into this. I'm very surprised at how small the box is considering, uh, again, how complex his games are supposed to be. I, you know, in my mind, most of the complex games I've, I've seen, you know, have uh, lots of components and, and, you know, pretty big boards and take up a decent amount of playing space. Not the case with this one. So let's get down to the table and I'm going to show you what comes with PAX Emancipation. Hey everybody, real quick, I also want to let you know before we get into the rest of the video about a contest going on for this t-shirt right here from Mr. Meeple. Check the link in the description below for the contest entry and you've got until about the end of March 2019 to get your entries in and hopefully you can win this t-shirt from Mr. Meeple. And if you haven't checked them out before, definitely go check out their website. It's pretty awesome. Okay, to the video. All right, so Pax Emancipation, The Global Struggle for Freedom, 1776 to 1917. Let's see what we got back here. So the seven wonders of the great civilizations were built by slave power, and society's need to enslave weaker neighbors went unquestioned for millennia. Until the day, an audacious petition was sent to Parliament, not just to end slavery in England, but throughout the entire world. In this game, you assume the role of an abolitionist during the Age of Enlightenment, either a parliamentarian, an evangelical, or private philanthropist. Assign warships to blockade slave ports or intercept slave ships, install missions, trading posts, and colonies in foreign lands. Steeped in serfdom, in foreign lands steeped in serfdom. Challenge the institution of slavery on moral and legal grounds in court and sanction underground railroad slavery revolts and revolutions. Play in cooperative, competitive, uh, cooperative, competitive, cooperative, or solitaire modes. If victorious, you achieve the greatest political accomplishment in history, making slavery everywhere illegal. All right, so one to three players, ages 14 plus, two to three hours. So let's get into this. Okay, so here we've got the rule book, which is, I mean, as I've been told, his rule books are pretty, pretty dense. So I think... Is this down here? Oh yeah, look at this. Okay, so it actually has like footnote, not cliff notes, footnotes here. So you know, it talks about uh, two million chattel slaves and then exactly what that means, chattel slavery. That's pretty interesting. So you see there's a lot of actual real history and uh, education value in here. But this is, like I said, pretty dense. But well, really though, when you think about it, when you have that much that is explaining the concept of, of like what migration freedom is, what citizenship and suffrage is, the prime directive, democracy. What, when you've got that much explaining that, this is actually the, the rules portion. And I would think that this, while it certainly helps you understand maybe the theme, isn't necessarily necessary for the rules. So, so that much is the rules. So where we go? we've got uh, 40, 42 pages including back here. And that looks like that's actually like a reference for finance management, I suppose. And so when you get to, I guess, maybe 41 pages of actual rules, but this looks like competitive. Hmm. Not sure how it's laid out exactly. But anyway, uh, pretty significant rule book there. Here it's got a table of contents here on the front. All right. And this is the advanced game. Oh, wow. Okay. So. That's the regular game. Here's the advanced game. Another 
36 pages of stuff here. Wow. All right. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Advanced Game Glossary. Advanced Game Glossary. So the Advanced Game is included in here. I guess. Let's see. We've got Introduction Components, Setup, Sequence of Play, Elephant, Finances, Gunboat Diplomacy, Action Phase, Ops Phase, Elephants, Walk, Roll, Hate, and Pogrom Rolls, Market Refreshing Game. Okay, well, we'll see how that all goes. All right, so here we've got some different components. Looks like we've got red. Yeah, so... Red, white, and sort of a teal, I guess. Sea foam green, maybe. Let's get into these and see what these are made of. All right, so this is, I believe it's plastic. Well, I don't think it's wood. It might be wood. Does the, is there an inventory here? Doesn't really say. Um, all right. So anyway, but you can see, so you have these different colors, and those are all the same kind of counter. And then for here, we've got looks like people, not your standard meeple shape either. A little bit different. Okay, these are woods, which makes me think that these probably are as well. Sometimes I have a little bit of trouble telling the difference. But these, yeah, these are wood though. Okay, again, have it in the different colors. So here we've got some disc, it looks like. Black and then looks like two different kind of greenish colors in there. So we got some cubes. That's probably a boat there, I'm assuming. What's this in here? Elephant. All right. Okay. Got some bags. Always good. Got some dice in here. All right. And they are etched. The pips are etched in there, which I always prefer. And these are a little smaller than your average size. I like the kind of uh, the, the color there and the kind of translucent nature of it. I like that. Okay. And let's see. Pax Emancipation Western Ideas. Okay, this is a Western Idea. Quilombo dos Palmares. A Quilombo is a Brazilian hinterland settlement composed of escaped slaves and Portuguese soldiers escaping military conscription. Palmares was the largest and lasted for almost a century before suppression. There's so much actual history in here. This is really neat. I knew that, like, uh, Phil Eklund, he's made some other games such as um, Neanderthal and that series. I knew that there was a lot of you know, prehistory stuff in there that was supposed to be scientifically accurate. But this is actually, you know, written history that that is recorded. And so we're able to, you know, it's, it's not just kind of theorizing what was going on, but actually teaching exactly what was going on here. Jesuit reductions. As seen on, in the movie The Mission, Jesuit colonies were refuges for... Uh, indigenous South Americans who set up militia against slave catching uh, bandi bandirantes, incredibly crushed by the Portuguese. So you go through here, all, all kinds of stuff. These are all Western ideas. And of course, I have no idea what the different things are here. Late slave rebellions. And you know, it gives you these years too colonial altruism. Uh, Protestant missionary, martyr, working class, rags to riches, inspirational story, scientific investigator and explorer, imperial reformer, anti-slavery crusader, and advocate of commercial and colonial expansion. 
So this is kind of, you know, yeah, they're in favor of colonialism, but at the same time, got this going on, I guess, where they're trying to get rid of slavery at the same time. Monumission journalism. You know, all this different stuff. This is really, really interesting. Separation of powers, faith and duty, uh, anti-federal monopolies, behaviorism, liberalism. All right. And I guess these are more Western ideas in here. Well, something else, too. These are definitely got some Western ideas here, but let's see what else is in here. All right, so let's go through this. Let's go back down. So we've got a few more Western ideas back here, it looks like. You know, just a few. Labor theory of value, communist manifesto, origin of the species, all right? And then, what's the next thing down is Eastern ideas, all right? Antonin mystics, and uh, Antonianism was a syncretic Christian sect founded by a young charismatic Congolese named Beatrice Kempavita. After she gained a reputation for healing and other miracles, she was burned at the stake by the Congolese monarch. Well, that's unfortunate. Anti-West, Dongok democracy, Baptist missionary society. That's an Eastern idea. That's interesting. Barbary wars. Crimean Intervention, Free Economic Society, Grassroots Party, 100 Days Reform. Okay. And then... So these maybe are... Okay, Civil Rights, it says. Slave Revolt on this side, Civil Rights, Slave Revolt, okay. So Satsuma Rebellion, Saigo, one of the two architects of the Meiji modernization, rebelled against the other architect, his old friend, Minister Okubo. His last stand in rituals, samurai suicide against Okubo's modern forces is the source of many movies. Is this the guy? I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that's, if that's, I don't know. Uh, Simon... Hashiri Edict. After the Boshin Wars, you know, I'm thinking, what I was going to say was 1877, that's the time frame of that movie what that Tom Cruise did, The uh, Last Samurai. I wonder if this is uh, one of the guys that was in that movie, maybe the, the main character uh, next to Tom Cruise. Anyway, after the Boshin Wars of the Meiji Restoration, Okubo made Japan the first Asian state to modernize following the European model, replacing the traditional Confucian hierarchical order, he issued the Kahore, an edict abolishing serfdom and the untouchable Barukuman caste. All right. American Revolution, the U.S. Civil War. All right. Napoleonic Code, Philippine Revolution, Pernambucan Revolts, Latin American Independence. else we have here so these look like this looks like maybe you build the map this could you got the Republic of China it looks like more specific you know somewhere more specific inside of China there maybe Soviet Union an Ottoman oh maybe this might be different time frames could be different time frames Dutch Indies East Indies John Company okay Empire of Brazil, Brazil, Congo Free State, First French Empire, United States of America, 13 colonies. Okay, yes, yeah, so that's different different time periods there for those. So what do we have here? We've got, so these are probably, the, okay, the different players. We've got Parliament, okay, and you've got the philanthropists are going to be the green color here, and then the evangelicals are going to be the white color. Then you've got some punch boards, Brazil, West Africa, punch out real nice and easy. All right. Ottoman, Europe. Of course, I have absolutely no idea what any of this means. Looks like you've got some uh, boat here, probably. Pacific T. All right. 
And that's everything that comes in the box for Pax Emancipation. So there you go. That was Pax Emancipation. I hope you enjoyed this unboxing. I am going to be bringing you a gameplay of this game as soon as I learn it. And I'm going to tackle making a how to play for this game. It could be... I mean, I've made one for Kingdom Death. I'm making one for Madara. I'm making one for Gloomhaven. This one, we'll see. We'll see if this ends up being the most complex game that I, I've tried to turn into a how to play. I'm not sure. I'm going to do it, though. So we're, we'll see how that goes. I hope you did enjoy this video. Like I said, if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe. Click that bell. And if you want to support the channel, check the description below. And until next time, if you're bored online, bored offline.